please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Actually, uh, uh, gentlemen and uh, Upasana, if you can wait by, uh, Shireen is actually in conversation with the Niti Aayog Vice Chairman, Rajiv Kumar. Uh, Shireen, over to you. Well, thanks very much, guys. Yes, we do have the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog with us here. Uh, Mr. Kumar, thanks very much for joining us. We are still going through the fine print of the survey, sir, but I want to highlight to you one of the important statements that's come in from the economic survey. Uh, the Chief Economic Advisor in the survey says a pause in general government fiscal consolidation may not be ruled out in FI18. Now, this is something that you have been maintaining for a while now, sir, at the Niti Aayog, and you've believed that even if there were to be a slippage, it is not cause for concern. Now, the economic survey is very categorically stating, and for the benefit of our viewers, let me highlight that statement again. A pause in general government fiscal consolidation may not be ruled out in FI18. What should we expect in terms of the fiscal deficit number then, sir? Well, I can't... Um, I don't think a specific number can be given out at this stage, but I think the economic survey is quite right saying that given the structural reform that have taken place in this in the in the, in, you know, in the to FY18 especially the GST and therefore the uncertainty in revenue collections but also the after effects of demonetization the greater formalization of the economy uh, you know uh, all of that uh, the fiscal deficit uh, you know targets could be paused and there will be a slippage but not much i can't no, i can't see it slipping very much because the government has done a lot on this investment and other non-tax revenues. Uh, even if there is a slippage in FI18, sir, which is what most people are factoring in, what does this now mean as far as the goalpost for FI19 is concerned, more importantly? Because that is what people are going to watch out for. So does the 3% target you believe for FI19, will that still hold? Or are we, are we likely to see a slippage and a move away from that as well for FI19 specifically? The glide path, the glide path could change, and therefore you might, uh, you know, you might expect a, a slightly higher fiscal deficit uh, target for FI19 as well, because after all, to bring it down from a higher, you know, from a higher FY18, uh, you know, level would be more difficult. But on the other hand, given that you know the indirect tax net has increased by about 50, 40 percent, as the economic survey points out, and the GST revenues are going to be very robust uh, going forward, maybe the finance minister will decide that he will stick to the three percent target uh, because that's been the that's been the sort of you know uh, trend in this government, which is to maintain fiscal prudence, and uh, hopefully uh, we will achieve that. Okay, so you're hoping that they will stick with 3%, but you're not sure. Uh, let me also put to you what uh, we have seen now in terms of uh, uh, new tax filers. Uh, the survey says post-demonetization in the GST, the increase in new tax filers uh, has been about 1.8 million, and that is expected to boost individual income tax collections as well. So do you believe that, uh, especially as far as the indirect tax collection is concerned, because that is where the real concern has been, not so much on the direct tax side, we could now start to see an upward momentum as far as GST collections are concerned. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, Shirin, it has always taken every other country uh, almost two years to stabilize a new GST regime. We have done very well to get a huge degree of stabilization already within the first six months. Uh, you know that the December numbers have been up mm. uh, already from a slight decline earlier. And I, I see that uh, this, you know, the GST numbers will be very robust going forward. In fact, I expect a significant increase because a large number of sectors which have never ever been a part of the indirect tax net are now coming into it. Uh, there is this greater formalization of the economy. Mm. The MSMEs are getting into the whole into the tax net. So I think yes, indirect tax revenues will increase. Along with that, also the direct tax revenues will increase because the because the effect of the uh, GST would also be that some of the uh, professionals, etc., who have been charging, who have been outside the net, will yes. also be brought into the net 
as a result of all, you know, all the measures that have been taken. Uh, I, so I, tax revenues will be buoyant, buoyant going forward. Okay, tax revenues will be buoyant. I want to point out, sir, uh, some areas of caution that the economic survey is throwing up. In the factors to be watched, uh, the chief economic advisor says high rising oil prices, sharp correction of stock prices, a sudden stall of capital flows uh, should uh, be some of the red flags to watch out for. Now, given the fact that we've seen such a significant mm -hmm. upward movement uh, in uh, crude oil prices. In fact, most market experts now saying that 60 could in fact be the floor as far as crude prices are concerned. And across asset classes, specifically the stock markets globally as well as in India, we've seen such a sharp rally. Uh, how concerned would you we be with the possibility uh, and the warning that the economic survey uh, throws up here on both these counts? Uh, on the oil prices, I'm afraid we will have to take the pain because it seems that the oil prices have risen uh, much, much more than what we had expected. Uh, however, the, I believe that there might be some events uh, coming up uh, which may have driven this, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, so for example, the listing of very large oil companies, etc., which might have driven this uh, sort of rally in oil prices. And if that happens, maybe the oil prices will weaken afterwards. So we can't just take it for granted, uh, you know, that they will continue to be at $70, etc. But nonetheless, 60 should be should should 60 dollar 60 per barrel is what we should be planning for but that also means that our petroleum exports their value will go up mm. and therefore and, and therefore we might have a, a good of a bit of an export surge so that's what the oil price is uh, here the government's attempts at reducing our dependence on oil imports by you know, by, by focusing on renewables as well as domestic energy supplies must be taken on board because that's what the government has been trying to do. On the sudden stall of capital flows, I don't think that will happen. Uh, there will be some market correction, as is all, always the case. Mm. There might be some correction in the stock market prices because they are they are at a, they are, they are at a high. But nonetheless, this, the, 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 this, the, the, the sort of continued upward uh, movement of our stocks and the inflow of both portfolio and direct foreign capital will, I think, continue. And, not, and we will not see a sudden stall uh, because uh, I, my guess is that even a slight hike in interest rates by the Fed and mm -hmm. by the European uh, you know, countries, etc., will not affect uh, the inflows into India because of our own buoyancy right. in growth and our better market conditions going forward. Uh, let me then ask you about the policy agenda, sir, uh, because uh, the economic survey very clearly suggests that the government must support agriculture, it must stabilize GST, it must finish the resolution plus recapitalization process, it must privatize Air India and head off macroeconomic pressures. This is the prescription that the economic survey has put forward. Uh, in the context of the budget, sir, uh, you know, the emphasis clearly is likely to be on be being able to address the the agrarian distress, the rural distress, what would your expectation be in terms of specifics beyond just higher allocation for schemes like the NREGS, etc.? I think the budget may outline uh, a, a different approach to agriculture, which is focused much more on raising farmers' incomes than raising outputs. Uh, we, the budget may also talk about a far a bigger holistic treatment of the agriculture sector to shift farmers from being producers of commodities to producers of agro products and therefore greater value addition and a shift to more high value crops within agriculture rather than stay with cereals etc as, as we have been as we have been doing in the past uh, agriculture also the credit to agriculture and to especially the farmers that may also that may also come up in the budget uh, but also the budget will emphasize uh, Shireen, uh, a, a, a greater reform of the health and education sector because they have been in the making, the two ministries have done a lot of work mm. and these reforms will be accompanied with higher, higher allocations uh, so that we can improve uh, the health and education standards of our people, which also the economic survey points out need, need attention. Macro stability, I'm not sure what the survey is implying because you know our current account deficit remains well within 1.8 percent mm. our foreign exchange reserves mm. are very high you know our, our inflation is at a record 3.3 percent cpi and our food inflation is going down to 1.2 percent mm. so i'm not sure what sort of threats uh, the economic survey perceives except of course for the harder oil prices but it also tells you that the world trade growth is buoyant yes. and therefore our exports would I think do very well and therefore our external sector 
must look much better going forward, which will drive our growth uh, to higher than 7.5%, as which is what the economic survey gives us the higher cap. Yeah. I think this cap will be breached in Afghanistan.